Now, Silvio Berlusconi, as you know, uh, announced that he will resign, finally putting an end to his third term as Italian Prime Minister. His leadership has been dogged by a series of sex and financial scandals with allegations of behaviour that has ranged from bizarre to blatantly corrupt. His control of Parliament had become a crucial element in the Eurozone's raging debt crisis as investors fretted over the country's ability to implement the austerity measures needed to cut its deficit. Joining us now in the studio is financial expert Eddie Hobbs. Eddie, good morning to you. Morning. Eddie, Berlusconi had to go. You know, he was a liability in a country that couldn't afford to have a liability like him as their leader. Yeah, he did, yeah, but that's not the story. Um, there's, there, there's sort of two ways of answering, you know, where we are, wh where does this leave us now? One is a sort of pussyfooting our own diplomatic answer and the other is the, tr the blunt truth. Or one is the optimistic outcome. The optimistic outcome is that Italian bond yields will fall, that the uh, summit um, provisions will be put in place, the firepower of the fund will increase, the Germans eventually will allow the ECB to start printing money and everything will settle down and the world will return to a stable growth path. That's the... That's the optimistic outcome. Something tells me you don't believe that's going to happen. Well, I'm watching a bank run, you know. There's, there's, there's money running out of Italian banks at the moment because, and they're a very wealthy country because they know, they've seen this pattern before. We've seen it in Portugal, we've seen it in Greece, we've seen it in Ireland, and it's started the same pattern. Oh, this isn't happening to us pattern uh, and all the positive noise is coming about the Italian economy uh, to talk it up. The reality is that money is going in the opposite direction. Investors are not putting their money into Italian bonds. I'm lessening all my client exposure towards Italian bonds over the last few I've been scrambling to do this. Um, and uh, the, 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 the worst, no, the, just, just so people will understand, because I think people need to be told the truth. The truth is that if Italy is, in, say, if Italy is bailed, if Italy fails, uh, we're looking at economic Krakatoa. Right, we're looking at a run on the European banking system. Money flooding out of out of Italy by wealthy people will automatically create a contagion, a run out of Spain, Portugal, Greece, and Ireland to so-called safe havens. Surely they won't allow Italy to fail, though. But, but they can't see, afford to allow it to it, fail. But everybody is yes, yeah, yes, that is that, yeah, and that is the backstop we're all hoping for. But you have to have Plan B ready. That's what people are doing. They're not. I mean, at the moment, economics is being run by politicians. That's a scary place to be. You just have to have a look at our crowd to understand that, and and they're the same worldwide. Now. Um, so you have to have plan B. Now, what people don't get is they see the volatility on the bond market and they listen to the headlines and they, they get bits of it in the Irish media. Um, but they just don't get it that this is all about the banking system, that the bond market is a proxy for the banking system because banks hold bonds. But the European banking system is shot, Eddie. We know it is, that. It is. So if, if, if Italian bonds mark fall dramatically in value, that's a quarter of the European bond market falling in value. That puts huge strain on European banks, many of whom many of whom may not be rescuable by their own gov governments because those governments themselves are up to the limit on how much money they can borrow to pour money into their own banking system. So you may have a situation where you get a wave of banking collapses, some of whom, who are not deemed to be systemic, will be allowed fail. Mm. Now, that creates a, a, a panic, a huge bank run across Europe, which would become a global financial event, which would dwarf what happened after the Lehman Brothers collapse. And in a situation like that, we just don't know where we'll end up afterwards. Because the core problem underneath all of this, when you, when you whittle it down, uh, is that we simply are not getting enough growth in the developed world economies to pay our way out of all the debts that those economies have built up by, by, by being, making promises that are undeliverable to public sector workers throughout the global economy, throughout the developed world, and other promises that can't be met by the growth. So, there, there, so there's a great rebalancing, to borrow that awful term, that needs to go on probably over a decade. Okay, without going into an, an apocalyptic scenario, yeah. what's the, ne the, sort of the least worst scenario? The, the thing the, that most realistically I, will well, happen look, in your Listen, opinion. everybody wants this thing not to happen. Right. We all want the European debt crisis to go away. The facts are it won't go away so long as the Germans have their boot heel on the forehead of the ECB saying you cannot print money because the Germans are absolutely horrified of hyperinflation. And but if words. they don't allow that, Eddie, they're going to have to bail out everybody and they can't afford to do that. Well, well the, the point is th there isn't a solution. That's, the, that's why I'm saying mm. you need a plan B. And the plan B is to recognise that we are now at an elevated risk of the collapse of the euro itself as a currency. That's just the blunt statement of fact. And consequently, well, if they felt that Greece could damage it and bring it down, then Italy going bang will well, certainly bring it down. Italy is unsavable unless you get massive international intervention. And will it arrive on time? Because this is all about confidence, and confidence has been destroyed slowly 
because of the lack, because consistently European political leaders have been behind the curve, they've been behind the pace of events, and once again they're behind. Right now what we're seeing in Europe is that they've lost a grip on the situation. That's quite clear. It's now purely in the hands of markets and how markets read it. So what I, what I would say to people is if you have any cash at all, you need to very seriously consider getting some of that cash out of Euro and out of this jurisdiction. And putting it where? Well, the ideal safe haven, unfortunately, despite its price, is gold. But there are other things that you can do. There's Australian dollar liquidity funds. There's, there's other places you can put money. But sure, if we all start taking our money out of euros, isn't that going to add fuel to the fire and only exacerbate the crisis? Sinead, as I speak, right, anybody that has access to any type of informed advisor, in other words, wealthy people, are doing this in Italy. They're doing it in Spain. They're doing it in other countries because they are reading the tea leaves exactly as I am reading them I and many others are reading them. The, the problem is that the comment, the comment, the, 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 there is this sort of consensus commentary going on that it will be all right. So ordinary people are saying, well, we're being told by our betters that it's all right. The facts are that wealthy people are doing this as I speak. They are moving their money. Follow the money. Follow the money. To gold? Gold would, would be one safe haven. No, I'm not trying to create a panic. I'm just simply telling people that if mm. Italy fails... This is, e this is an economic event that we haven't seen in the last 100 years. And what it shows us is that the whole Keynesian model of banks creating, uh, you know, multiplying and gearing and all the rest of it has been an utter failure. And, and we know already, because if you look at stock markets, stock markets are in a bear market for 10 years. There hasn't been any fundamental economic growth for 10 years. We've had two major crashes. And I see another one around the corner if this problem isn't solved. Okay, Eddie, we'll leave it at that for the time being. Thank you, Eddie.